Chris, I'm just a classic game for you guys today. I mean, obviously a back and forth deal, but your offense comes up big late and your stars shine the brightest TA, rowdy those guys. I know you never have any doubt in them, but how big was it for to see those guys come through for you on the big stage? Yeah, that was kind of a nerve wracking game. So when we fell behind seven three and but those guys, man, they played as good as they can play today. Kind of put the team on their back. But we had some other guys, man, Brad Cumbus and Cameron James and LT's big swing and me and Fox are sitting there debating in that, I guess it was the eighth, or maybe it was the seventh, you know, who we putting in right here? And then as soon as that ball went up from LT, you know, we uh, – it seems to be ready to go. And so I, I thought all the guys were good today. I mean, we had a – Will kind of had a tough start, but I thought everybody else, the Rowdies, the Tanners, they just – every at-bat was so competitive, we just put pressure on them from, from pitch one. Let's go to Robbie Falk. Yeah, Chris, speaking of uh, Will not coming out and ha having a quality start there, it just seemed like your bullpen was able to really stabilize that ball game and keep it from spiraling out of control. I mean, even Chase Patrick got you out of that inning. I know he gave up a three-run home run, but Preston Johnson uh, shut down the offense landing as well. What did you see from those guys today? Yeah, I thought our bullpen was good. Even Chase, I know we missed on the one pitch. Um, but I thought Chase was pretty good and got us out of the jam. And a uh, tough day for Will. Will's one of the best pitchers in the country, and we're not here without Will. And you got to tip your hat, man. Those guys are – and those guys in the other dugout are really good. And uh, their coaching staff had a great approach against Will today. And um, Will fought. Will competed. He got out of a couple jams. Um, but just in the heat and as many pitches and as many jams, we just felt it was better to go to – Go to another arm right there, give him another look. And then, uh, like you said, as, as guys came in, it just felt like we pitched better and better as the day went on. Let's go to Joel Coleman. About that bullpen, Preston, of course, had a humongous day for you guys out there to kind of settle things down and, <clears throat> and give you guys the chance to come back. But uh, it just seems like as the year has worn on, your confidence has probably grown and grown. And, and, and Preston, is that the case? And just talk about his, his growth into this role now to where you don't mind running him out there in a super regional late inning, you know, situation. Well, that's the thing. During those those times and those big moments when the game's on the line, it's who do you trust? And, and he's a guy that's – you know, garnered a lot of trust here over the last month or so, and he's done it all year. He can come out and give us a two or three in and stint if needed, and he comes in and throws strikes. And so uh, that's what we're looking for. And, and shoot, we got to recycle him and get him ready and possibly throw again this weekend. But um, I was really happy with the way he went out there and just competed. They got to run, but they had to earn the run. He doesn't give you, you know, not a lot of freebies. Let's go to John Sokoloff. Chris, where does this game kind of rank for you in terms of intensity between the record crowd for a Super Regional, the five different lead changes, you know, just the stakes today? I mean, what was the last time you had a game as intense as this one? That's about as, as, as intense as I had. I mean, I guess Omaha when we played Auburn, I guess maybe the first Stanford game. I mean, they just can't seem to keep getting bigger and bigger here. And, man, what a, what a job by our fan base. I mean – on a day when the, the heat index is – I mean, I'm soaking wet right now. I know most of our fans probably are. Um, but, the, I mean, we had fans out here at 8.30 in the morning. I'm walking around the stadium saying, hey, and they're sitting out already. And to fill the ballpark the way they did and then also to, um, you know, as loud and as vocal. And, and they were a difference maker in today's game. Uh, the dude effect, we call it. But um, our fans, man, they, they, they kind of kept us through it and kept us in it the whole time. Let's go to Theo DeRosa. <clears throat> You talked about LT's big swing for a guy who was over three, hit into two double plays. How big was that to see that from him? It was huge. Like I mentioned earlier, me and Fox are just – we're literally having a conversation. And when the ball hit the bat, it was get Sims in. And we were, that's why we called timeout with Scotty DeBrule. We had to give Landon a couple pitches to, to get ready. But um, LT's – I mean, a couple of those balls. You know, in our game, if you hit a ball hard and they turn a double play, it's okay. We don't want to hit into a double play. But – he hit some balls really hard today, too. And then their shortstop on, on the, I guess, the last double play made an unbelievable play to get out of that inning. And uh, you can see why they're ranked so high defensively is, is some of the plays they made out there. But um, I, I was happy for LT. You know, on a big stage and a couple situations didn't go your way, he's still mentally locked in and staying in the moment. And, man, what a pretty swing. Let's go to Shotgun Spratling. Shotgun. Chris, what, what kind of impact do you think the, the atmosphere had on Notre Dame in this game? <clears throat> well, I just think it, you know, it makes it tougher to pitch, tougher to make plays, tougher to, you know, sometimes swing or stay off pitches. You know, I, I think they just, you know, at certain moments when there's big moments in the game, man, it's hard to hear, hard to talk. I mean, and so um, 
they they seem to do it. They do it all the time. It's in our league and it's you know in postseason. But um, I thought our crowd was huge, and I think it made a difference today. They maybe put some pressure on them and uh, made them speed up a little bit, I guess you could say. But um, I'm glad they were on our side. Let's go back to Steve. Yes, these are the kind of games you guys come to college to play in. And <clears throat> so when you begin to think about this kind of moving forward, going get to sit in somebody's living room talking about college baseball. I mean. These are the kind of things you mentioned. So how, how good is it to have that and then win the ball game too? Yeah, it's awesome. I mean, um, you know, there's a big win today, obviously, winning game one is huge. And then, you know, using Landon to get the win and then being on, you know, national TV and everybody seeing us. You know, the hard part a little bit is, is the recruiting calendar's opened up and there's recruiters everywhere across the country. And I keep telling our guys, it's okay. There's TVs on all across the country and people are watching us play. Even though we're not out there, I know the best players in this part of the country are watching and um, just like you hear our players, um, it's an experience like no other. And uh, having the opportunity to play here, play in this ballpark, play in front of this fan base, um, man, it's it's pretty special. Let's go back to Robbie. Coach, uh, last week we saw you extend the pitch count a little bit for Christian McLeod and Will Bedmore. <clears throat> Do, does anything change with Landon down the stretch in, in the regionals, super regionals? Can you extend him a little more, maybe pitch him – uh, tomorrow, or what's your thoughts on that? You want me to start him? I could start him and get it out to a good start. You know, the There's thing a lot is, of people on the message boards that want that. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure. So, um, you know, with Landon, it's usually about Landon. Landon gives me a heads up and, and where he's at, and we're always going to protect him. But I do think he'll throw more in the postseason. He's a strong kid. Um, he's been, you know, he's he's been on a good count all year long. But it's just, you know it's it's how he responds each day, and we want to put him out there in the best situation to win. So, um, yeah, I hope so. I hope he's out there, you know, finishing a game tomorrow or whenever. So, um, but yeah, he, I think this time of year it's 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 you're pushing to win, and you want to be smart with your guys, but also they're you know they go a little bit far, like you said, like last weekend, guys went a little bit longer. That could happen to Landon too. Let's go to Rick Cleveland next. Yeah, I, I don't know what your plan it was coming into the game with Sims, but I'm guessing your decision was made as soon as Tanner's ball went out of the park. Yes, it was. And we were actually about the – we were sitting there debating it, and uh, we were putting him in for the win. And as soon as that ball went up, uh, he was going into the ball game. So we had another guy ready to go who was going to go in, and then if he got in a jam, we'd go to Landon. But once that ball went up, it was get Landon ready and, you know, we're going to – play the last six outs with the, we feel like, the best closer in the country. We have time for a couple more. Let's go to Tyler Horka next. Yeah, Chris, back to the, uh, the theme of offense. How reassuring is it that, that your guys come out, come out on top in a game like that against a lineup that just scored 50 runs in a, <clears throat> in a regional and, uh, you know, everyone knows how well they can swing the bat, but, you know, your guys end up swinging it just a little bit better. And, and really, they you know they threw two really hot arms against us today. You know their starter was really good. He's been really good, and then their closer, um, man, that's plus stuff. And I tip my hat. I'm so thankful Jake Gotro's on our staff because him and Cheese have our guys ready every week, every pitcher, and um, you know. And then you look up and you have this offense that can just do a lot of things. I mean, I just we're athletic. We can hit for average. We have some guys who can hit for some power. We have some veterans in there, and I just you know. It's, it's a tough lineup, and we match up and can and lock in on somebody else and have a great approach, and I thought that's what our guys did today. They didn't panic. They just tried to keep the lineup going and get another guy to the plate, and um, then Rowdy gets the big hit, and then LT gets the big hit. We just – I feel like we've been in this type of game all year long. We just – we're never in blowouts. So maybe that helped us today. All right, we'll end with Trey Monger. Yeah, Chris, I'm just kind of curious – from a manager's perspective in a game that's back and forth like that, is it almost a sense of helplessness just watching from the dugout? <laughs> I don't know about helplessness, but it's a, it's frustrating in some ways. And it's um, and then you just you sit there and you say, man, we're in a brawl. You know, I think one of our kids just came in off the field and said, keep punching, keep punching, because it's just it's one of those games where um, it's going to be decided late. And it'll be like that tomorrow. It's two really good teams, two really good offenses, uh, two well-coached teams. And it's just going to be like that all day. And um, it, it was. It was a little frustrating at times. You know, you're sitting there and you you want to get some momentum. But I, like I said, Will wasn't at his best, but they were also pretty good too. You have to give them credit, and they had a great approach on him today.